Bill Clacker. All right, y'all. Welcome back. We're uh, we're rolling. We've been getting some good stuff down. Yeah, this is great. It's been a true joy. Here with Weston again, doing the old captain thing. Notice you're wearing a cowboy shirt. I don't want to stir up too much stuff in the comments <laughs> here. <laughs> if if Luke was here, you guys, Luke, uh, Luke's uh, Luke's tied up again on this episode. But if Luke was here, I don't know what he'd have to say about you wearing a little. Uh, he'd be supportive. You think so? Yeah, Luke support me. He understands. What? I I recently moved to Dallas not too long ago. Mm-hmm. I've never had. We've always liked the Denver Broncos and huge. Things. And we've been very anti Dallas. What I would say. I, I think everyone is. If you're not a Dallas Cowboys fan, you hate them. Soon as Troy Aikman retired, I was like, I'm out. Yeah, but I moved to Dallas, and you know, I thought I've never had any sports teams that I can lay a legitimate claim to, you know. For any, and so I said, you know, what? I'm I'm a Dallas sports guy now. This is the first pro team town that you've lived in, right? Yeah, exactly. So I've you never lived in a in, in like, a place with a like you can't be rolling around Dallas being like, go Broncos. And how I'm, can you I'm even be? It. How can you even be a go Broncos guy at this point? It's tough. It's tough. They're hard. It's tough. You didn't know. Steady at the wheel is going to become your guys' little sports uh, rundown. Oh, you know, maybe we could zoom you in for like a little Dem Boys update every, <laughs> every time. Dem Boys lost go. in the second round of the playoffs. <laughs> Here to remind you again. That them bo- <laughs> oh, first time I called whenever and you're like, Dem Boys. I was like, oh, Stoney. He's all in, man. Just embracing it, man. Just roll with it. <sighs> Hope the comments are easy on me. Yeah. I I think yeah, you know, there's a lot of Southern Texan type. I bet there's a lot of probably got some boys down there. A lot there of too. fans. If not, I think you've done a good enough job doing these recordings that they will give Dallas the nod, even if they don't like them because they like you. Does that <laughs> good. make sense? Yeah, it does. Oh man, so heard a story this week that I had to share because there's some good things to be learned from it. It's a story. It's another DOT story. Finally, one that didn't happen to me, and believe it or not. <laughs> uh, but it's a DOT story. DOT, for those of you that aren't in the trucking world, is the those are the law enforcement officials that um, basically enforce the trucking industry, the rules of the trucking industry from each state. Each state has its own cadre of officers, and that's all they do. They don't do anything, they do nothing to do with cars and pickups and civilians and all that. It's strictly just truck regulations to just to enforce trucking regu- regulations yes. and some of them enforce them to the exact letter of the law some of them enforce with a bit of you know leniency about like your regular enforcement officials cops and yeah right there's probably kind of the same thing mm-hmm. yeah yeah same yeah some of them are like nope sorry you were going one over you're done yeah some are like yeah you know shape up yeah it's good watch out Anyway, it's same exact same kind of thing. It, and that's that's all industries everywhere. Really, yeah, right. right. <laughs> so, anyway, I get a I get a call from a friend down in Idaho. Actually, this is the same friend who slept walked his way into the truck stop in a fugue state last fall hauling cattle. That was wild. <laughs> Wasn't that funny? Yeah. <laughs> Poor guy. He's like, well, I always thought it'd be fun to be in your podcast, but I didn't realize it was going to be a story about me. <laughs> It's like Nolan says the same thing, uh, being the wind guy, because Nolan's the one that blew over. So he's like, everyone knows me as the guy that blew over. Like, I'm more than that. I'm like, well. Well, let him know. (laughs) Yeah, let him know that before I came on, I was just the little lazy-eyed kid. You were just stony, pig poop stony. Pig poop stony, dead sheep stony, (laughs) lazy eye stony. Yeah. So so Wyatt calls me and tells me this story. He goes, I'm hauling cattle. Got a story for him. Hauling cattle. We loaded wherever he loaded. Me and another guy. We're hauling cattle. And we, we're coming up northbound up towards Idaho Falls, somewhere up that way. And we get pulled into the Income Scale. Now, if you're a trucker, you know Income, Income just has this weird way about it that puts you just kind of on edge. It's... On one side of the freeway, the southbound side going down into Utah, it's like this decroded little flat-roofed little shack. Mm. Just very unintimidating um, there. But then the northbound side, it's like they cut the top off of, uh, uh, what's those big towers at the airport? Air traffic control? Yes. It's, it, it has that feel 
where they like cut the top off one of those and kind of set it there. It's a little bit hot. It's high enough that it makes you uncomfortable that as you drive through, you're kind of like, Whoa. is that right? You feel like they're just kind of like, what you doing down there? It just throws you off a little the bit. The eye of Sauron, yeah, perhaps. Yeah, exactly. Yes, like when they, when Frodo gets spotted. Ah, that's, <laughs> it's just like that. They just send down like a beam into your cab, and you're like, no. Uh, so anyway, this is the scale they're talking about. And most truckers, if you're listening, you're probably laughing because if you've been through income, you know, you just know all this. You know what I'm talking about. Anyway, they go, they go across the scale and Wyatt was legal and good. So he rolled right across and they let him go. The guy behind Wyatt didn't quite as carefully load his trailer. Um, maybe he should have gave one extra animal to Wyatt. Because why it was legal, and he ended up not being legal. Yeah. So he crosses the scale, and they they give him the flag, and they bring him in. They give him the red lights. Come on in. Come on in. Bring your paperwork. Bring your birth certificate, your social security card, your past employment history. That's how you kind of feel like sometimes when they're like, bring in, because they just say, bring in your papers. Oh, yeah. Like, what do you mean, my papers? Like, like (laughs) all my papers? Anyway, so he goes in there, and they're like, well, you're overweight. He's like, okay. And they're like, and unfortunately, you're you're just too overweight. So in Idaho, what they'll do, if you're heavy, as long as you're within 10% of, so 10% of your max yeah. legal limit. So if you're, say you can do 34,000 pounds on your drive axles, 10% of that would be? 3,400. Y- uh, yes. <laughs> right? <laughs> I think so. As long as you're within 10% of that. <laughs> no, that's a good. <laughs> you're like, wait, what? <laughs> Sorry. As long as you're within 10% of that, you you can basically get out of there as long as you're under that 3,400. If you're over the over amount. If you're over that extra 3,400. Yes. So if you're 3,450 pounds, you're, you're too far over. Mm-hmm. And they won't, they give you a ticket, basically, an overweight ticket. You get fined for the overage and all that, and you're in trouble. And then it costs you. Yeah. And it's on your record. Right. Yeah. yeah. Did I explain that all right? Does that make sense? To me, it does. You get okay. a 10%. You'll get ticketed if you're over they 10% will, over your mm-hmm. legal. Yep. The, yep. They will sell you a permit for that 10%. So if you pull in and you're a little heavy, they'll go, hey, we'll sell you a $50 permit. Okay. So you have to pay for it. Yeah. Okay. But it's reasonable. It. It's like, okay, 50 bucks, whatever. Here's the permit. Go on your way. You are overweight, but we sold you this permit. So you're good. Okay. So he was over that allotted amount by 40 pounds. 40. Four, four zero. Four zero. Not 3,400. He, he was 40 pounds. I don't know if it was his truck or trailer or where he was heavy. So And he bought the permit? So Well, well I guess he couldn't, right? Because they... Because he's over. And I'm not sure exactly Idaho law if they sell you the permit or if you just now get the full overweight ticket. My guess is you get the ticket, you have to buy the permit, and you have to unload cattle. You probably get the, the trifecta. Okay. So anyway, he uh, he basically takes his punishment. And what they tell him is, here's your overweight ticket. I, I believe he had, I think, actually, I think he had to buy the permit. So here's your permit. Here's your overweight ticket now for being overweight. I don't know what that cost was to him. He didn't say, but here it is. And then also, you have to stop at the next, like, legitimate cattle receiving location and unload and get legal because you're overweight. Mm-hmm. That's that's the rule. So for him, it was Blackfoot, Idaho, which is you know further up north, up the freeway ways, um, north of Pocatello. So that's what they tell him to do, and he's like, okay, okay, thanks, you know. And everyone's always like, they have this mentality. They were like, man, at least they let me go. They're like, what do you mean? At least they let you go? Like, what did you think they were gonna do? Like, <laughs> put you in jail? I thought I was going to jail. Because I see. Here's my thing. I, I've always been kind of anti-authority, even with school teachers. Yes, you have, Jay. Just always, yes, you nah, have. Always looking for a fight. Yep. You, in fact, you and Luke both, I think, are <laughs> That's where I got probably the from. two most <laughs> anti-authority people. Yeah. You remember Luke's stories? So anyway, I'm always like immediately when they're like, this is the violation. I'm like, no, come on. That's, <laughs> you're not even, that's not even close. That's not even right. Yeah, it is. And you're like, no, it's not. Let's, so then we start going to battle over what is the actual rules. And, and everyone, and, and they're always saying, no, 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 just go with the flow. Don't, if you talk back, if you anything, 
they're going to really make it bad. I'm like, how does it get any worse than having to buy the permit, getting a ticket, and having to unload some cattle to get legal? Yeah. Like, what's worse than that? Yeah, right. Yeah, really. There is no worse. Well, I, but they could they could have inspected my truck. I'm like, I mean, okay, sure. I guess they're going to pile on some, you know, light being burned out violation. Here's the thing. It doesn't, in my honest opinion, it does not pay in these situations to just lay down and be, thank you, sir. Oh, appreciate that. Well, what do you do, though? What? So there's a lot of things you could have done. And this is why I'm going to share this. I'm not, I mean, this guy, he got it done, got the deal done, took care of business, whatever. They got the cattle ultimately where they have to go. Can I actually, uh, so yeah, before, so the next thing you're going to talk about is what you could have done. And right. I just want to interge- interject yeah, something here ahead. for anyone who very reasonably might say, okay, but what's the scale supposed to do? The guy was 40 pounds over. It was 40 pounds, but he's over. If you're over, you're over. Right. If you find yourself saying that, I just want to point out, just thinking about it, you know, if he was given an extra 3,400 and he pay, if he would pay for it, he was legal mm-hmm. and he was 40 pounds over that. That's like, I think it's, Unless I did the math wrong. I just did it on my phone oh, while you're talking. Okay. But I think it's 1.17% over. So my only point is if you are a person and you, and you hear this and you say, you know, don't have that approach. That's it. This, what's this guy supposed to do? If he's over, you ticket him. Right. If the speed limit's 60 miles an hour, 1.1%, you know, that's roughly 0.6 miles hour miles an hour over. So if, if that's your approach, you oh. bet you better be okay getting pulled over for going sixty miles an hour point six and getting pulled over and ticketed <laughs> and getting a ticket for it. If if you're if you find oh. yourself saying, "Hey, they should," what do you do? You're over. Okay, that's fine if that's your belief, but you better also be okay if you're driving sixty point six <laughs> miles an hour. You better be okay eating a ticket. You smile and shake his hand yeah. for giving you that ticket. If that's your approach, you got to be consistent. Uh, that's right? interesting. That's a good point. That's a really. I'm glad you brought that up because that is that is the other side of that coin where they say, "Well, over is over." Yeah. Okay. Well, then then own it. You know, right. in your life, that's what I think. Own it. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, so okay, so how do we learn from this? You're a you're a trucker out there. You're getting some behind. You get in this situation. Uh, they always give you a chance to get legal. They will always give you a chance to get legal before you leave the, the scale, and which is of course why they told him to go unload. You have to get legal. Obviously, you can't dump a cow out in the parking lot. So go to the first place that you can reasonably get legal and get legal. Mm-hmm. Okay. And so they go and they do that. They're, they're worried the highway patrol is going to follow them down there and watch them and all this. So you're 40 pounds over with a load of cattle on. You say, okay, let me, let me just stew on this for a little bit. I'm going to, I'm going to, I think I can get legal. That's all you need to tell them. I think I can get legal. You go out and go sit in your truck for 45 minutes. Check your tires. Do yeah. a walk around. Make sure your cattle are all up and good and whatever. Clean your truck. Wipe down your dashboard. Yeah. Do whatever. And go run around the scale again. I promise that within 45 minutes, that load of cattle are not going to be 40 pounds overweight. If you go around the scale again and you happen to be heavier, you can go in and be like, well, how? there's your, there's your ammunition to say, you got to let me go. Your scale's not even right. These cattle aren't gaining weight on my trailer. Yeah. They're losing weight. And your scale says I'm heavier now. That's not even, it's not humanly possible. But if he would have just weighted it out, he would have shrunk down. Yeah. Because that's what cattle do. Cattle shrink. They just shrink. You don't have to dump any manure in the parking lot. You don't got to do any of that kind of stuff. Yeah. You just sit there for a minute and they'll shrink. And he, he could have got around and saved them all the hassle. Because once you get those tickets, they're on your little record. Yeah. You know, they're not a moving violation. So they're not going to like hurt your insurance. But they're on your, you know, whole oh, wild, wild west had a you know, overweight ticket or old Billy John, Jim had a, you know, it's on there. Yeah. And it stays there for a while. So does that affect like your insurance rates or anything? uh, Would it? Non-moving stuff. Okay. Doesn't, but it, but it does go on your, your federal FMCSA score. You know, they go, this guy, this guy's always overweight. So you'll start getting pulled into scales more, you know, because they keep track of that and you have a rating. So when you roll across the scale and they go, here's, here's Weston, he's been overweight like, Seven times the last couple of years. <laughs> Struggle losing weight. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I did not see that one coming. <laughs> I walked right into that. Oh, um. <laughs> anyway, that that would be my thing. But uh, you know, wait that out. 
you know, empty some water out of your jugs or whatever. It's 40 pounds is nothing. Yeah. Especially when you have a live load on. But it, it frustrates me when I hear these stories for those for those two reasons. One, that they can't have just a little bit of chill in a live load situation. Yeah. Live, to start with. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I understand if you, you went and loaded, you know, I always use the example, you went and loaded at a warehouse where they have an unlimited amount of this product. Yeah. You know, like if you're, say, say no, let's just say you're loading a load of corn out of a bin somewhere. And they're like, how much weight do you want? And you're like, I want this much. And you purposefully are like, this is it. And that's yeah. that. And that's my weight. I chose it. There's this giant bin of corn. Yeah. You know, I could have I took 40 pounds off and been legal. It's different than cattle. It's just the cattle thing. I know I always say like, cattle haulers, you know, go easy on them. But they just, they deal with a lot. It's just very unique. It's unique. Yeah. And yeah. so when you're getting nailed for... Being one point one seven percent over <laughs> what would be legal, that's kind of tough. Yeah, it starts to get frustrating. And 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 so then his lesson is: well, next time I should I'm going to make sure I give Wyatt one more cow because I don't want the hassle. Ideally, you don't even want to get flagged in. You know, yeah. you just want to keep on rolling. Time is money. But uh, but keep that in mind, and then just remember that you, it's all about knowledge, understanding, knowing the rules, and and don't if you if you refute what's you're being i don't want to say charged with because it's not like a criminal thing but if you refute the trespass that they point out I'm, there's some law stuff Jeez, i'm trying yeah. to point when okay. weston's here is like you gotta kind of use the law terms so but if you refute it and they punish you that's actually like the grounds for you to be like no, ho- hold on you can't punish me further for asking a little more clarity on what you're charging with, you yeah. know, what you're being charged with. Um, if they do that, then they're actually in a spot where like you're being mm, targeted because you spoke up. And yeah. That's, that's not right. Yeah. Yeah. So if, if you know, these, these trucks, truckers kind of get in this mentality that like, no, I have to just, I have to just take it no matter what you don't. I mean, you still might get the ticket probably are still going to get the ticket. But by I found in my experience that when you actually show that you have some knowledge and understanding of these regulations, oftentimes it goes from uh, violation to warning. Yeah. Or even if you push it even far enough to where you're like, no, I want a ticket or I want gone. I don't want a warning because warnings go on your record too. I want one or the other. If you're gonna give me a ticket, give me. T- and then a lot of times they're like, ah, just you you know better than this. Just you need to do better. And you're like. And and I will. It's yeah, bad. right, bad. right. I get you. You're not saying to be a jerk or anything, but just know your rights. Yeah. Know, know the stuff, mm-hmm. and don't be. Don't always just say, "Okay, yeah, no, let me. Sign. Where do I sign? Where do I sign? Where? Yeah, right. Just exactly. Just look into it a little bit. Yeah. Think about it. Yeah, and 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 there's more stories along those lines where I had a friend of mine once got he got weighed across the scale and he, like legitimately rolled across the scale. He was legal. He was good. He goes down to the truck stop and is fueling up, and a highway patrolman pulls up and is like, back to the scale. And he's like, what? Back to the scale now. Took his driver's license from him at the fuel pump so he couldn't run what? off or whatever. Yeah, this was in South Dakota at the Tilford Scale in South Dakota. Takes him, escorts him all the way back. And he's loaded with cattle. Goes all the way back up, has to make the big loop around to get to the scale. They weigh him. And he goes in, he's like, what is the issue? They're like, well, your weights, his weights are legal. She's like, your lift axle was not down when you crossed the scale. And he's like, what are you talking about? I would be so overweight if my lift axle was not down. There's no way I would cross the scale without my lift axle being down. I mean, it's like, I'm, he's maxed out, you know, with his axle down. Yeah. And she's like, no, you, you came and cried. It had to be you. And he was, and he, but he didn't refute any of it. He's just like, oh, okay, okay, yeah, okay. And she gives him a ticket, all this stuff. And when he called and told me, I was like, he's like 24. I'm like, nah. Yeah. If they're, then they just had him mistaken with somebody else. Like it was just a mistake. Oh, yeah. I I wouldn't have got past the fuel pump. If that guy's saying, turn around, give me your license, and you don't know what it's about. (laughs) Yeah. So but I, I'm not. Do, you're not hold on. doing anything until yeah. you tell me exactly what's going on. And then the whole kicker was they brought him up, weighed him, and he was completely legal. Jeez. And he's like, "I'm legal because I'm legal." <laughs> well, he didn't say, you know, you got to produce a picture or video or something of me with my because this is just wrong. Yeah. And she she backed him into accepting a, a warning, a written warning for whatever the violation they, they put on him. 
but it, it was just another reminder that you're like it's and it was it was her mistake but she wasn't going to let it go once she realized mm, maybe i did make a mistake mm. so you, you just just keep that in mind you know there's yeah. a trucker tip for you out there that's good yeah i've uh that reminds me I'm trying to figure out ways to get rid of that extra 40 pounds uh-huh i don't know if you remember this i uh are you talking physical pounds or trucking? No, pounds? I obviously don't know how to do that. <laughs> <laughs> but you guys, I always tease West and he's always, even you, you and Luke Coulter, all you guys, you have, like when you, when you grow, you proportionally grow. <laughs> when I grow, I've got the runt gene of the family. <laughs> so I just grow like this weird little trucker belly thing and everything else. Legs don't get bigger. <laughs> shoulders don't get bigger. Arm, no, mm-mm. all just goes right around the little corner. Oh, of the belt. No, I'm not talking about, I'm not <laughs> You're talking, talking, talking about trucking. Physical, I'm talking okay. about trucking. When me and you were, this was later on, uh, but we were doing some pasture hauls. So this was when you'd gotten some, you know, regular semis and bull racks, but we were doing pasture hauls out to Hobson, Montana, or uh, out by Utica kind of. Uh-huh. <laughs> and they'd set up a jump scale. Yeah. Do you remember this? Maybe you can set this up a little better uh, now. But we yeah. were doing some pasture hauls for a neighbor. Okay, I know where you're going with this one. Okay. Let me, yeah, let Speaking me... of trying to lose weight <laughs> while the DOT is breathing down your neck. Okay, so let me set this up. We get a call from a neighbor who's in a bind. At this point in my trucking career, we really didn't do pasture hauls. When we're talking pasture hauls, you guys, it's where you go to someone's pasture. They have portable corrals that you load you load out of and you haul from the pasture back to the ranch. It's always short. It's usually, yeah. you know, 10 to 40 miles. It's it's a lot of back and forth, not real lucrative. There's better ways to earn the money, yeah. but somebody's got to do it. Yeah, hard on equipment. Yeah, hard on equipment. We had a neighbor gotten a buy and he had some trucks back out, and he's like, man, I, I got to get these things home. Is there any way you would do this? We're like, yeah, 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 we'll be there. So Weston and I go out with the two trucks to just knock this out, and... Um, the cattle, they're coming right off green grass. So yeah, they're full. They're full. When we say they're full, they drink a lot of water and all that grass has a lot of moisture content in it. So they, they're just, their bellies get full and that turns into a lot of poo and a lot of whiz in the trailer. A lot of crap. So it's just pure liquid and ends up very deep, but you're just, you're making rounds yeah. back and forth. So you're like, well, we're not going to clean out between each run. You wait till you're all done. Yeah. Yeah. So the place that we were hauling from has a scale that opens about once a week or so. If that, right? Yeah. Uh, at that time, it was very rare. Now they do it more, mm. ironically. But at that time, it was once every couple of weeks. Just so happens that as we're doing our last loads out, it was the last one. So yeah. we were full, trailers were full. Oh, 100%. A lot to of water. Max. Yeah, a lot of water. And where he, this jump scale is set up is, I mean, right where the turn is that we make. So you, we, yeah, we make turn our turn. to the highway. Yeah, you right turn onto the highway, and the jump scale is right right there to the left as you're turning right it's just to the left of you yeah like there's no mistake and here we are Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so we're coming out of the mountains and we're coming out and the the road coming from town actually he didn't bother to go in because he's like no trucks come from town it's this little tiny town he didn't bother to open the sign yeah that's what so it was closed so technically from where we were coming from even though we're driving right by this i mean literally ah said it again we're driving right next to this. We could throw a rock and hit his pickup. Yeah. <laughs> this is that close. But our sign said close, so we don't have to stop, which is a good thing because we're heavy and but full you still, of juice. You, you still want to play it cool, right? Play it cool because <laughs> dumping manure on the highway. Or yeah, just or anything sketchy. not coming to a complete stop yeah. or uh, anything is, well, he can just jump in his pickup and come yeah, pull you, you over. Just, so you got to really play it cool. And you know Weston's a little jumpy still because we've had pretty a few young skip. man, pretty young. <laughs> so here we are. I I think I called on the phone. Oh, CB was it CB? Was it or no? Probably, probably the, uh, either way. Yeah. So I said, hey man, we just really play it cool right here. This guy's right. He didn't come after me. Just be so chill. Just we'll be fine. <laughs> I think it was on the CB, and I think what makes it funnier is I think you were like trying to kind of speak in code in case he was listening because oh, you don't know if he has and, a yeah and i think you're just kind of like hey buddy everything's good just nice and keep it cool everything's <laughs> all right just like trying to kind of like <laughs> and so I, I get the hint i'm like oh gosh and so i pull up <laughs> to the stop and you know i'm buckling up and everything 10 and 10 oh, and yeah. 2 on the wheel making sure <laughs> everything's perfect come to a stop and it uh, sometimes in that semi when you get into I guess second gear when you're empty but when you go into it like it does a little jump if you're not mm-hmm. just right on the throttle which you, you get used to 
but it can really kind of turn into Keep a bucking a little horse. Hot that. there for a second until you get under it. Yeah. So sure enough, come to a complete stop. My trailer is filled after these four loads. You know, it's filled with this pasture grass, cow crap that is just like water <laughs> in in the bottom of my trailer. Yeah. Put it into that gear, and I'm sure he's just looking at me through the binoculars. You know. <laughs> And does a little little rocking horse, yeah. and I look back and I just see cow crap just just back and Slushy. forth out every side of all over the highway because I got nervous. And then of course, I, so I'm like trying to you know trying, to, trying to even things out and recover, but it's making it worse. So then it's really rocking, and there's just <laughs> crap everywhere, and I'm sure that he's gonna just come oh, and, and nail then, me. Remember that they had redone that road, the bank of the road. So when you turn onto the road, it takes your whole rig and tilts it to the left. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So then I just got crap pouring out the side, rocking horse. And I finally get it leveled out and we get down the road. And I remember CP and Jackson just being like, oh, I think he's coming for me. <laughs> <laughs> that did not go well, brother. <laughs> so, so point being, I did drop that extra weight probably not the way you want to do it but always an option if you want to just go drop your clutch and then just rock and horse like a bucking horse well it's our biggest nightmare to lose any manure out of your trailer like you (laughs) you don't if you're ever behind a truck and he's dumping manure just going down the highway it's not like he if if you're like trying to pass him and there's this big string just going down the highway, it's something's not right it's not like this guy's being an idiot um so, so we're always trying not to just nothing. Yeah, West, right in front of the DOT. I mean, I cannot describe enough how how close he yeah, was. Right, I mean, he's, he's just right there. right there. And he's just splish splash. I was taking a bath. Oh yeah, everywhere, man. D- did but not it, play it cool. <laughs> but but he never came. And I'm just trying yeah, to never think came of like me. what can I? And I'm far enough ahead that I'm like, uh, do I leave him? Just feed him to the wolves? Do I stop and try to come back and talk him out of the ticket? Oh. Uh, Oh, man. Good stuff, Jim. Um, So, okay, let's move on. Um, A quick little recap of our last time that we recorded. We... uh we talked, let me think. Oh, yeah, we finished the, the story where we had to go out and get all those cattle out of that round corral. Oh, yeah. It, it was it was low paying. We spent two giant full days out there hauling these cattle we in. Still thought we were rich. In hindsight. In hindsight. In, in the moment, though, we were, we were saying, we got $2,000. Here it is. A cool $2,000 for yeah. two 12-hour days. <laughs> as soon as it's done. <laughs> You know, and some of you guys, you might still think, "Hey, well, that's a lot of money for two days." But you just factor in the fuel and the equipment and the wear and tear. Well, yeah, and what you yeah. what you could make trucking hard for yeah. two twelve hour days. Yes, right. yes, it starts to all kind of become clear that we were uh, we were we were kind of took not on purpose, but we got took a little there. Yeah, so we uh, took ourselves. <laughs> but the end of all that made me realize, like. We got a thing. Yeah, I got, I got, I got Weston, who's who's cheap labor. He's just happy to be spending time with his brother, and getting to drive a semi on your own is becoming kind of a cool thing. I yeah. Assume, oh too, yeah. Right? Oh, I was stoked. Yeah. You know, because yeah. mo- most kids in high school are like, "Oh man, I got this half ton pickup and whoa," and you're yeah. like, "Oh, I got a, I got a bull rack." Yeah. <laughs> you know? Absolutely. Or a hay trailer, as we <laughs> would get into. So this, you guys, this morphs. This morphs to where I start thinking, you know, we can haul cattle. We do bale a lot of hay here on the ranch. Um, at that time, we didn't have a great way to, to bring our own hay in from the fields. We were using those old two-ton trucks with the hoists, hauling like six bales at a time, and those old trucks never ran right. Well, now we're looking going, we got, we got semis. We might as well, and we, got, and we got a semi with a fifth wheel plate. Yeah, that's the game changer. We didn't really know what to do with it at first. But yeah, then but we, it starts to become clear. We started to see there's a reason why everyone in the world who trucks <laughs> uses this. <laughs> uses a semi that can unhook from its trailer and isn't permanently a cattle truck. Yeah. So I start, uh, I start looking on the old Craig's. Because she old, always gives you something. It is the tree that just bears fruit. Yes, it is. It may take just hours and days and night after night of scouring, but somewhere, someplace, you're gonna find a gem. Mm-hmm. Mm. Shout out Craigslist, I guess. Shout out Craigslist. Yeah. Let's make it a thing again. <laughs> Facebook Marketplace. <clears throat> get on out of here. Where's the Craigslist? Anyhow, so uh, so I start looking on Craigslist. My idea is I'm gonna find an old flatbed trailer. Again, you guys, poor starting out, not borrowing money for anything, just paying cash for what I can find, don't have a lot of money. 
So most of the trailers I find, I'm like, oh, that's sweet. Oh, it's fifteen thousand dollars. Yeah, that might as well have been a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, to me at that yeah, time. Yeah, right. I don't make that in a <laughs> like, year. No, <laughs> no. I got a five hundred dollar cab over with a with a fifth wheel plate. <laughs> got to find something that matches. Yeah. Well, sure enough, in true Craigslist fashion, one day I click on a thing. It's like good old trailer. Been on the road. Don't use it anymore. I think it was like. Three thousand dollars. It was cheap. It was twenty five hundred, three thousand. So. Oh, it was. And the the catch was that it was a forty five foot trailer, which is like uh, forty five. Yeah. But he had put an extension on he it sure for did. hauling his own hay around over there. Yes, he did. So I called the guy up and I'm like, "Hey, man, I'm a, you know, just kind of been trucking. And of course, you're always trying to kind of is it Puff project? Your chest. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah, I'm, yeah. you know, I'm a little more than I am. I'm nothing, but I'm. <laughs> I don't want to be like, hey, I don't, I don't know anything. You kind of have to try to act like you, you know, put on a deal. I, I got a trucking outfit over here and doing the deal. Saw your trailer, you know. Looks like it might have a little use. And I'm sure this guy's like, <laughs> yeah, you'll see when you see it. Anyway, I decide I have to have this trailer. It's the only one I'm ever going to find that I can afford. There's no way something yeah. cheaper than this is going to come. Just done because I mean you can scrap it for probably probably fifteen hundred dollars is the scrap value on it. We are making money here. <laughs> we are. So I I decided to just pull the trigger sight unseen. You know what? Let's buy it. No. Well, because yeah, because I had to do the deal before it? he. I think I had to do the deal before he'd bring it over the mountains because he hauled it clear he over did to bring Conrad. It to Conrad. But you still had me look at it. I remember. I I think I said I'm sure I'll buy it. Let's do the yeah, deal. I'll bring some money. Let's we'll make a deal. Yeah. But the guy, and that was back when it didn't cost $600 to drive a couple hundred miles over the hill, but, you know, diesel was a little cheaper. Uh, we end up deciding to meet. So Weston and I bobtail over to this town, Conrad, Montana. He comes from over the mountains. Yeah. And we meet up. Yeah. And one thing I'd remember, because I was there when you were calling him and stuff. Oh, okay. We were in the same room or whatever. Uh-huh. I remember you saying, him saying, yeah, no, take a look at it. And I remember you saying... Because at this time, I, w- I think I was a senior in high school, and mm-hmm. I was I had you know taken several welding classes, and I was really you know getting oh, yeah, into you were becoming, way into the welding. I was yeah, I was a getting... decent welder, uh-huh. and uh, I was working on a feedlot, welding on a feedlot. I was pretty good. Yeah, and I remember you saying, I'm gonna, "I'll have my fabricator look at it." And I remember thinking, "Who, who is he gonna? Who is it?" And then I realized <laughs> he's talking about me. He's calling me a fabricator to this guy. Jim, I had to project. I don't know. You were really pre- you know <laughs> don't project on third parties. So he said, I'll have my fabricator in my head. I'm thinking, you know, flashbacks to me in welding class. Like, you know, you had those metal stools. And while my buddies are welding, I like have the acetyl- oxy-settling torch. And I'm like heating up under his, so that he has, oh, what's going on? Like and heating up his seat. Heating up his seat. You know, that's burn. kind of. So, so that's the fabricator that Jackson's talking about. So I remember getting up to Conrad and, you know, I'm the fabricator jumping out of the side of the truck. I have no idea. And so I'm like, all right, I'll look around. And so I'm kind of looking. I'm like, oh, yeah. It's made of some sort of metal, for <laughs> sure. It, it does guys. have four wheels. <laughs> well, it's, it, it, I had no idea what I was supposed to be looking for or at, but I'm the fabricator, so I got to do He's like beating the hammer against the frame, like, <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Beat uh-huh. the hammer, and it, it was rusted out, so it goes it straight was, through. <laughs> you guys, it didn't matter what kind of shape this trailer was in. It he pulled it two hundred miles to come meet me, so I'm like, that's good enough. So I've already got it made. <laughs> I, I, that's actually funny because I remember, I remember how that little bag of cash that the bank gives you when you go pull out cash. Uh-huh. You know what I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah, the little. You had the little bag of cash, and you know, big thing is you show up with twenty five hundred dollars oh. in cash. He's not gonna say no. And I was Dave Ramsey. I was. Oh like, yeah, and I'm sure yeah. this guy is like, I pull this thing over the mountains. No way he's gonna say no. <laughs> Right. I mean, we were really the ones yeah. that were like, yeah, we're taking and I whatever. Bet, and his backup, it was bad enough that his backup plan had to be, if he doesn't buy it, I'll drive to Great Falls and drop it at the scrapyard. Because <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> I'm sure. That's the kind of shape it was. I remember like. this trailer, new flatbeds, right? They kind of, they bow up in yeah, the middle. nice little Real bow. nice, mm-hmm. gorgeous bow. Mm-hmm. This thing was a little sway back. Kinda I think it the, bowed down in the middle. Sow a belly bit. going on. Yeah. The old sow belly, we call it. <laughs> See, and, yeah, and... Uh, it, but it, oh, oh, but it was roadworthy. It was a transcraft. Any of you that flatbed, enough said. Yeah. It was a transcraft. Yeah, she oh, well used transcraft. She was well used, but she was roadworthy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, it was. It was. It had tires on it. and So this was, your thought was for hauling hay. Hauling hay, because I'll start getting some gigs. I knew what we could use to haul hay out of the fields here and had a few people kind of, you know, oh, do you haul hay? And you're like, well, maybe. <laughs> Depends. Of course I do. What do you got? Do you have dogs? <laughs> do you have a place up in the... <laughs> so we, anyway, the way it ends, my fabricator checks it out. Fabricator did not catch that there were some pretty big holes in the frames did we even notice that i no, think i can't remember if we did or not oh it was just right above the wheels where the where the salt would spray up yeah there was a couple spots where the cross members were arrested through i mean what's the big deal but but the side frames were not yet no not they yet. weren't yeah so we're like ah oh, that's that's normal he's like oh that's totally normal guys <laughs> every steel trailer on the road and them cross members they're gonna be you know a little eaten up okay yeah no for sure got it okay here's your twenty five hundred dollars Here's your trailer. We're in the game. I remember feeling just could not believe. So this was pretty monumental because mm-hmm. this was the first time that we'd hooked up just a regular fifth wheel plate semi to anything normal that we like. It's that ours. we owned, right? Like, this is our thing. That wasn't like some weird 28-foot double yeah. pup trailer. <laughs> this is the first like rolling down the road and we finally were like, we look sort of normal. Sort of normal. And the trailer was baby blue with a lot of rust mm. coming through the blue. Kind of looked like something off like The Walking Dead. Yeah. You know, like that yeah, patina very. look weird, but yeah. not. But That's we had a, we had a plan for the old trip. Well, oh, yeah. for, we had to build a hay rack. Yeah. So we get this trailer home. And we're stoked. I'm I'm like $2,000 into Le Beef, and I got this $2,500 trailer. For less than five grand, I'm a hay hauling dude. So, except for... Got to build a hay rack. Got to build a hay rack for this thing. Now, because the big round bales. Right. Yeah, because those round bales stick out and you got to make this cradle so they'll haul properly. Yeah. So I'm like, no big deal. So we go into the scrapyard, you know, where they sell new steel pipe. And everyone's like, and I'm like, I got my fabricator. And he's been been welding pipe over at this feedlot across the road. Hey, Hey, ready. You were ready. I was ready to roll. The one thing we weren't ready for was realizing the cost of materials. Yeah. So go in there, just kind of, hey, you got to build a hay rack. What do you got? Didn't for, we, yeah, we kind of priced out, okay, we kind of thought in our heads what we need for some pipe. Yeah, and so we kind of need the rough lengths, and, and then yeah. you need all the channel iron yeah. to go in the stake pockets yeah, and right. all this stuff. We got it. You know, we kind of had a pretty good idea, so many feet of this and that. And um, we go in there, and they're like, okay, yeah, so this and that. and blah, blah, It'll be, I don't even remember the price. I have no idea what they said. It's probably like five grand or, I don't think it was, it wasn't that high, but it was, it was well into the, you know, into getting what we paid for the yeah, trailer. Yeah, it wasn't five grand, but it was Cause, yeah, I, close cause, as much as you paid. You know what, what, why it was so expensive, and I didn't realize this until just now, is they offered, they offer at that place to cut everything to size. Yeah. So I was like, we need, we need like 64 little channels that are yeah. eight inches with a 45 <laughs> degree cut, and then we need, I mean, I think we'd laid it all out. Yeah. And so they're like, okay, all these cuts, and they just charge so much a cut with their big old saw. Yeah, right. And so that's what they came back in the thousands. Yeah, yeah, it was in the thousands. It was like for sure. what we'd had in the trailer, and I'm like, yeah, <clears throat> like oh, still oh. trying to project, you know? What, yeah. Oh yeah, of course. Like, <laughs> oh man, <laughs> what a title. Mm. Mm. Interesting. Ah oh, shoot, what kind of you get fluorescent lights you got up there? What? Are you, <laughs> How do you like those? Yeah. Things? How's business? Be business being okay. Yeah. <laughs> trying to just stall and just think we gotta get out. Gotta get, get out, out now. Here. Leave. You are not meant to be here. <laughs> So out of our league with finances. <laughs> We're so poor. No money. <laughs> Just broke. <laughs> oh, so then, uh, yeah, we scram. Like the guy turns around to grab a <laughs> print out from the printer. We're like, go, go, go. Yeah. <laughs> we are he gone. turns around and we're gone. <laughs> so we rework our so plan. So we're like, okay, what could we do? And, and we get old Rooster in. Rooster always has. He's, oh, he's yeah. made so many strange things over the years to make things work. Yeah. And he's like, what if... You got some round fence rails, yep. just round wood, long rails. They're wood rails, foot yeah. Wood rails, like you build a rail fence with. And if you get them rough cut, they're even they're cheaper. Cheaper. They're not treated. They're just <laughs> old right, they're rough, rough cut. cut. So he goes, "What if you could make those somehow attach those to the flatbed?" And we're like, "Okay." So then we come up with this plan that we need very little channel iron for stake yeah. pockets, and if we get big round pipe. That's big enough that the wood can go through it. Right through the round pipe. Yeah. They will basically, we'll put one like every 10 feet. Mm-hmm. 
or eight feet or whatever, yeah. just down the just side. Just a little thing. And we'll slide the wood rails through it, and then we'll screw the rails yep. to the holders. Yep. And we'll have an entire hay rack put together for like $150. <laughs> Nothing. And that's exactly what we did. <laughs> that's exactly what we did. So this trailer now, this old Transcraft blue with the rush showing through. <laughs> and don't forget Lebeef was jackknifed. Oh, yeah, Remember? Jackknifed so the whole LeBeef corner of the crunched. cab was like... <laughs> <laughs> With rough cut, with, so bark is all bark, on these things. Bark on the stuff. Rough cut and, poles, and, and, and those poles. One end is a full, like a full, <laughs> almost eight inches, and then the other end's like two and a half. Yeah, yeah. They taper down like a Christmas tree. It tapers yeah. to yeah. the top. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness! But we put it together, and we go out and we load some hay just to kind of test it. Hay fits on it. Everything seems to work. This is where though we found out the transcraft wasn't quite all there. We unload the hay from our little test, and some of the steak pockets had just completely oh. ripped off. Remember? <laughs> Forgot about this oh, part. Oh, I do, yeah. Totally just yeah, ripped just right crunch. off the side. So we start looking, and the entire length of this trailer, the side, like the rub side rail that the steak pockets weld to, about every three or four feet, there was a major rust through where like, mm, that's not going to hold anything. Again, just a small thing the fabricator missed. Small but I mean, you're going to miss some stuff. <laughs> Any good fabricator's <laughs> going to miss some You never stuff. know. You just know there's some little slip through. <laughs> you get me to let a snort. That's, uh, <laughs> that's good. So, so, we, so we, now we have to go back in and we have to find some, we find some new stake pockets that we have cut to size. <laughs> And we go along the trailer and we just find the spots. We identify the places that were strong enough (laughs) to hold a weld. So we have random. Just random. Oh, yeah, randomly spaced. So now instead of nice eight foot, it's like, here's three in a clump. (laughs) And there's one down here. And here's one over here. So it's just painting the whole picture. But we realize that we, like, we know. We don't, we realize this, this is not looking great. Yeah. But prior to this, Rooster had gone to a farm auction and came home with a box of treasures. You know, at a farm auction, they're like, they do a box and they're like, hey, here's this, but you have to buy everything else that's in the box. <clears throat> Sweeten the pot. Sweeten the pot, they say. You know, in auction school, they taught us to never say uh, three words when you're selling these things. You don't call it stuff, junk, or things, but it's usually always just stuff, junk, and things all is all of it those is. things, yes. Yeah. <laughs> merchandise. Yeah, all those fine merchandise. So Rooster comes home with some kind of old school paint sprayer, pneumatic, hook oh. it up to your air compressor paint sprayer. Game changer. And I had learned that you could go into Ace Hardware and they could come up with any color of metal paint you wanted and custom mix it for you. <laughs> yep. So I'm like, okay, well, if you paint over all the rust, it's hard to see. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. So we go into Ace and I Does think it make it any more structurally sound really for no. for now, right? No. It's kind of like a Monet <clears throat> painting. It's good from afar. Jeez. But far from a good. Monet, you, you know? say. Like the further away you get, the more clear the picture becomes. Then you get up close and you're like, what is, how do you, what's this? That was this hay trailer. Yeah. So we go in and at that time, I don't remember when this was. This About was 09. 09 to 10 ish, whatever. Yeah. The the hot truck colors back then. It was like, the, if you wanted to do the sickest thing you could ever dream up, yeah, paint your frame either neon green or neon orange, and paint your truck body black, black. just black. Cool. And, I mean, that was more than oh, trucks. I mean, t shirts kids yeah. were wearing. You went neon and black. That was the thing. The coolest mm-hmm. thing that lasted for about six months. <laughs> yep. And we bought this trailer in that win- right, right in that yeah. six month window. Right in that window, man. <laughs> right in that window. <laughs> So we go march into Ace, and I'm like, I need the neonest green that you have. So they do it, and then I need the blackest black you have. And they get, so I come home with these two gallons of paint, and we just go, and we just start spraying. And, and one day later, I mean, didn't, I don't even know if we washed it. I think we just took the air hose and sprayed the dust off and just plastered it on. I mean, just guys, laid it it's on. It's a $2,500 trailer before you get all crazy about the prep. It's got holes all <laughs> over the place. It's Fabricator bucks. missed some stuff. So it turns out not as good a trailer as we thought. <laughs> not as good. So, so <laughs> the whole under frame care, everything is neon green now. The whole side is black, and you've got the tree bark wood oh, hay so rack So it's like rails. this natural thing. And the whole purpose of it is to haul hay. So what better to haul hay than a neon green and black rig and a cab over on top of it? Yeah. And when we painted the cab over black, it pretty much hid the jackknife. I will say, 
I saw that truck when I was welding on that feedlot. It was our neighbor's feedlot, and you can see the highway. Mm-hmm. And I remember to this day, you know, looking probably a mile away and seeing you turn onto our county road in that truck and thinking, <laughs> that is sick. That thing looks pretty dope. <laughs> did you paint the wheels black too? Yeah, I did. I blacked <sighs> them out. Yeah. So it was just this old rattle can wizard. So, so I stopped one time to fuel up that truck. And I remember it was some, it was a Canadian guy had come down and he's like, Hey, I got a buddy up here up north. And <laughs> Is that he, talk? Ah, God, it's hard. I, 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 my Canadian blends with my Wisconsin. Wisconsin. Oh, yeah. he's, he's like, Hey, we got a, we got a buddy up here. Hey, <laughs> ah, I don't know. Okay. Anyway, he goes, I, I got a friend that he, he had an old cab over. He kind of fixed up and he put it in a truck show, got $2,500. And he's like, you should, you should enter this thing. Now I knew I, it, I didn't even entertain it for a second, no, I, but, I, like, but it I goes knew. to show Monet. Mo freaking nay. Mm-hmm. Good from afar, far from a good. That's what I'm talking this about. This dude was fooled. I'm like, dude, it's got a jackknifed cab. Do you not <laughs> see that the whole corner of the cab is crunched? And but he painted over it. He was hook, line, and sinker oh, yeah. for the He's neon like, no, green bro, and black. Neon green. <clears throat> Be the sickest hay hauler at the truck show. Oh, man. So we were ready to, to, ready to go. Ready to go out and get some gigs with we're this We're ready thing. to go. And as luck would have it, guess who came through again? Let me guess. Craigslist. Yep. <laughs> Dude, every time. Oh. He's like, when you need something, just type in old Craigslist.com. Craigslist will provide, or and used all, to. Yeah, all of a sudden, kaboom. So I'm out there perusing. There a, used to be this section, jobs. And in the job section, there was transport jobs. So I would just salivate over like all the over-the-road things. I was like, ooh, <laughs> wow. Wow, they're paying. They're, wow. <laughs> but I find in this thing, this little, just this pretty brief <clears throat> thing, hay hauler needed... Lots of loads must load yourself. Some just a few, just brief, like uh, ASAP, please help. And I'm just like, you know, what's the <laughs> number here? Oh, yeah, write down his number. Uh-huh. Yeah, uh-huh. Okay, uh-huh. Uh-huh. just thinking cha ching. Oh, yeah, I'm like, I don't, it doesn't matter what it is. I got a neon green and black trailer, a shrock. He's gonna love me. So I call the guy, and he's like, Yeah, here's the deal. I live about 20 miles north. And uh, of Harlem, of Harlem, Montana. I live 20 miles north of Harlem, Montana, and I put up a lot of hay down by Harlem down there on the on the highway, and I got to haul it all back up. And I'm just busy, and I I'm kind of my one I'm by myself for the most part, and I I just don't have time to get this done. Is it something you could do? And I'm like, it's already done. <laughs> Consider it done, <laughs> friend. <laughs> did you go look at your field? It's all done already. <laughs> I did it. You know, so. Anyhow, we uh, we line up the details, and basically, through our vague communication, <laughs> yeah, this, the deal was, you're going to drive up to you know the edge of town, there's a field, you'll see a bunch of hay bales out there, you'll see this old tractor, and there it's going to be, um, pull off there, and I'll meet you at one o'clock, you know, tomorrow, yep. and, and I'll show you the ropes. That was it. He's going to meet us at the field yeah. at one. Yep. And I don't, I don't think he had a cell phone. Yeah, he I didn't. think that's why it was so hard to yeah, communicate. And that's why everything was like, well... Yep, you're right. We're so, f- yeah. <laughs> so, here we go. I'm like, Stoney, let's rock. We're going to do this thing. We're just going to tag team this thing. We'll just have a blast. We're going to go camp out up there. He's got like 15 loads to haul back yeah. and forth. We'll just go camp on it and do it. Yeah, so we got a sleeper. Just, we'll just go head to toe in the bunk. Tag team this brother thing. time, you know. It's going to be awesome. Yep. So, we head up there. So, I'm Jackson heads up in the neon green machine... And I follow in my pickup, so we have something so we, we can kind wheels, of run around. Yeah. We've got wheels because it was close enough. It was like, no, no just bring the pickup yeah, up. Yeah, Harlem's we'll not that far. And so we get up there, and these fields are—I mean, it's right between Fort Belknap and Harlem, Montana. There's just a couple miles, and there's uh-huh. a bunch of hay fields on both sides of the road. And this is just on the right side of the road as you're heading, you know, northwest between those two. And uh, Jackson, we get up there, and there's an approach into the field. We see, oh yeah, all these hay bales are out here, right on the side of the road. And Jackson pulls in the approach, and I see the truck. So I see this guy, oh, Fred. We knew his name was Fred. Yeah, and I pulled down and parked. Yeah, Jackson pulls down and parks, and there's a truck right there. And mm-hmm. I know the guy we're meeting with is Fred. So I pull over, roll the window down, and say, hey, Fred. He goes, yeah. Yeah, he's Fred. He's sitting right there waiting for us. Yeah, and so he jumps in my truck, and I say, oh, Jackson's going to hop in. So I pull up the mi- It's a little single cab pickup. So I pull up the middle, and old Fred gets between me and Jackson. Cozied up. And so I'm, in my head, I'm thinking, wow, the hayfield's right here. What are we doing? And so then he's like, all right, let's, let's, you know, let's go. And so we jump in. And we say, don't I say, Jay, Fred's right here. 
so we jump in we're heading to town i'm thinking in my head i'm thinking he must have some other hay fields he wants to show us yeah. maybe like kind of show us where everything's yeah, at show before us the we get going. and so we're talking you know we're going oh good to meet you fred and like, oh yeah good to meet you guys it gets a little quiet then we pull into Harlem, just a couple miles up the road, and he says, uh, "Pull in that gas station. That'll work." Oh, okay, and so we we maybe maybe he's gonna buy some sodas to get started. Good guy, Fred's a good yeah. guy apparently. Yeah. And so we pull over, and Jackson hops out, and Fred hops out, and he says, "All right, well, thank you much. We'll see you later." And we're like, "Whoa, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> what? 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 What is going on?" <laughs> and he says, uh, "What do you get? Turns out, didn't you? Didn't my wife send yeah, you? Yeah, didn't my wife send you?" turns out this guy was a random guy named fred <laughs> broke down on the side of the right road there. into the approach, the approach we're supposed to meet fred at. that we're supposed to meet the real fred the guy who puts up all this hey <laughs> will the real fred please stand <laughs> yeah. up so show yourself <laughs> so the just the funniest circumstances he broke down he said no my phone was dying i called my wife and she said she's he's on his way to an eye appointment, eye appointment in haver yeah. he's from malta going from malta to haver broke down <laughs> right in the approach his name's fred and his wife was sending a friend from Send somewhere that was going to yeah, pick him up and take him in there. <laughs> and it turns out I pull over, roll the window down and say, Fred. And he says, oh, yeah, I guess this is who my wife will help. Anyway. If they know my name, how else would they know my name? Just hilarious and actually pretty fitting intro to this whole experience. <laughs> so we're like, uh, okay. So, yeah. So we're like, oh. Okay. Anyway, we laugh and we go down. And then the real Fred. There's the real Fred waiting for the us. real Fred like, is down in there Fred, showing us stuff. You're never going to believe what just happened. <laughs> it's the weirdest thing ever, man. Oh yeah, it was the uh, it was good. So we uh, let's see, we oh yeah. So then so we get rolling. Fred, uh, Fred, the real Fred, yeah, proper Fred, not imposter Fred. <laughs> he's and he's just real easy going. So the guy because some some of you might have come across his work. I don't think it hurts to say his name. It was it was Fred Lease, yeah, who is a very well known in Montana and the, the Western circles, a very well known cowboy poet. Yeah, it, phenomenal. Like really, he, yeah. he's a really good like cowboy poet. And like it, if you enjoy any of that, look up Fred Lease, and they're just a freaking champ of a guy. Just, yeah, just like the best guy. Yeah. just so easy going. And of course, he probably wrote a poem about our. <laughs> I'm sure he did about our <laughs> Fred and the imposter. Yeah, right. So he's like, all right, this is what you're going to load with. And it's this old Oliver, an Oliver tractor. And it's like the first front wheel assist tractor ever made probably from the 60s. Yeah. It's an Oliver. He's like, now she's a, she's a pretty good old girl. Just one little thing. She's got a two-stroke Detroit in her. And I'm like, mm-hmm. just immediately Jackson just flashbacks to Jake, the, the Jake semi that blew up. up and he's, <laughs> you know, Jackson just shaking. I say, Jackson, no. Jackson, we are here in Harlem, Montana. We are loading hay. West this is like, not, yeah. you are not hearing okay. the motor of Jake okay. that is blown up on the yeah. side of the road. Okay. Okay. I have to bring him back okay. to earth. Breathe, Jackson. Yes. Oh, yeah. Breathe. 100%. Breathe. Oh, so we finally get like, so we start loading hay. Well, but, and Fred mentions, right, that. Just kind of the situation of why he's, he's calling people. And he said, man, I'm sick of hauling hay. He says, I've got my outfit, you know, his truck and trailer. Say, I've got this old truck. That yeah. he usually hauls with. But I just don't have time to run it. Yeah. Well, so what are we thinking immediately? Because we're all into like efficiency and yeah. loads and go. Weston <laughs> kind of knows how to drive a truck, sort of. He's, he's had a little experience. <laughs> yeah. Been there, done that a little bit. So we, yeah. So we asked, this is how good Fred was. I'm like, hey, my, uh, my brother here in high school has driven some truck. Would you be interested in him driving your truck? And then we could just run two loads. We'll work out a deal. You basically just kind of pay him as a driver. And Weston's like, I'm going to finally get paid probably. Yeah, I might get paid. If I'm running this truck, I'm probably <laughs> going to get paid. So we work out a deal. I'm like, it's going to be, you know, whatever. It's going to be $350 for my truck. It's going to be, you know, $100 a load for Weston to run yours. Yeah. Because we were loading ourselves and unloading ourselves. We get going, and I fire up this Oliver tractor, and he agrees to it. He's like, "Yeah, heck yeah, yeah, Fred." Loved and it, it was as, as as it would have it. It's a ninety eight hundred International, which is the same model as Blue Two. Ninety eight hundred. Oh, oh you mean my truck? Yeah, oh, the one you yeah. drove. Yeah, yeah. And uh, had the big steer head on the top. Oh, I'll never forget. Had a huge scoop hood on the top, yeah. aerodyne hood. Yep. And it was a Coriani Association. It said Coriani Association on the yeah. side. It had a big old like mural of team ropers <laughs> up on that hood, roping a Coriani yeah. steer. <laughs> it's green just and the white, wildest like looking two-tone, truck. Two-tone, crazy green and white thing. And uh, we actually had a bigger bunk, so we ended up sleeping in that. We moved all we our did. bedding into that one. Yeah. We're like, oh, yeah. It was hey, in good yeah. shape. It was in good shape. Yeah. All Fred takes care of his stuff. So I start loading with the old Oliver, and... 
became clear pretty quick. It had like one claw, like a bent claw. <laughs> like it wouldn't actually grab the brown bales. It would kind of just like, ha. Yeah. Like, ha, ha. Yeah, it made a great effort. Mm-hmm. And then it was like, mm-hmm. like you'd wrap it up to just uh, scream and and the hydraulics were just so slow. And then same, the gearing, it was just weird and turkey jerky. Took about two, three hours to load the first two loads. <laughs> yeah. And I'm starting to just like, ah, I can't. So I'm like, this this tractor isn't going to work. We have to figure something else out. But anyway, we get the loads loaded and we start we start rolling that first day. I think we got maybe two rounds in that first day. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Do you remember? He, so he was hauling from Harlem up to, I still remember it. It's called the Black Coulee is where he ranched. Was it? Black Coulee up outside of Turner, Montana. Uh-huh. We're getting close to like, Canada. Mm-hmm, right on the border. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You are right at the Canadian border there. Yep. And I remember their place. They had a like a their stack yard was right at the top of this bench. <clears throat> and then you could see the road went down a hill, kind of a blind hill you can't see. And down at the ranch yard somewhere that looks like it down off way off. We thought it just looks like, you know, oh, here's the stack yard. And it looks like the ranch is probably way off. Yeah. So I remember we get up there and there's no tractors, I don't think, to unload. Yeah, no, we roll in. We're all hot and heavy. And two of these old cab overs, the old neon green and black. And the Corian. And the Corian. Wes is back to just swinging his rope. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The thing could move. Dude, it did. You were pushing me everywhere. I remember, I remember the hill. I think it was by Harlem Colony, the Hutterite Colony. Yeah. There's a hill or something. Right I always remember eating you up. Because I think it had a true big cam 400. Yeah. And I had the 350. Formula 350. And I had a little bigger trailer. You had that 40 footer. Oh, I don't know if, if that made a, I don't know if that made a big difference, but more of the, the operator, I think. But I remember we got up to the stackyard and we couldn't uh, see any, any uh, tractor. So we're like, oh, we better go up this road another few miles probably and, yeah. and get a tractor. Like he's find got out well, He's got to have something down there. So we're looking in the stackyard, bunch of old equipment and stuff and old trucks, cars, Again, typical random. old yeah. place. All the, they're so far out in the middle of nowhere, all the stuff. You kind of have to, Just right? like, whoa. Well, yeah. And I, I remember there was an old, it was probably like an 82 or 83 Ford, this kind of square body looking old Fords. Yeah. It yeah. was the most capable looking of all the stuff. Yeah. And, you know, it had some, the, no keys in this one. This yeah. one's got no windshields. And then this one that was sitting there, we're like, well, this, <laughs> it kind of looks like better, but. Yeah. Meh. And we grew up with, these are the trucks that Rooster always had around. Yeah, just old Those 80s stuff. Fords yeah. always. Mm-hmm. So we we get in that thing and we work our match and get that thing fired up. Mm-hmm. We jump in and we just go rolling down like, the road. We're like shoveling out beer cans. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, what is this thing? It's like a museum yeah. of bush light, you know? <laughs> yeah, like, exactly. And we get down the road and we go down in the, to the ranch yard and there's Fred and yeah. he's just looking wild-eyed at us. Like, what is like, that? What? And, and we're like, hey, Fred. And one immediately thinking like, crap. Like, maybe we shouldn't have drove this truck. Yeah. Because it just kind of... Like, yeah, just what? really looking at... It says, how did you guys get that started? <laughs> Wait, what do you mean? We just... I don't know. We just did a little... And he's like, that thing hadn't... That was some ranch kid came up 25 years ago and helped us with a random thing, and he left his truck. Got in trouble, got arrested or something. Yeah, got some in some legal trouble. Story and just yeah, he's like, we haven't, even, we haven't touched that thing, because we don't, want, we don't want anything to do with him, or this guy's bad news. <laughs> He's like, no one's even touched that in like 20 years or whatever. And we just got her fired up. <laughs> See, we just come marching in, which explained all the beer cans and stuff. Just yeah. like, this is crazy. And Fr- Fred's bewilderment is seeing that truck <laughs> just rolling down the road. Yeah, just come popping in. <laughs> just, oh, he fuck. probably thought it was the kid came back or something. Yeah. I'm sure that's what he thought, his first thought. Yeah. But then he gave us, I think we had two tractors unloaded up there, an old case. Oh, yeah. And yeah. then the old Belarus. Belarus. You guys ever been around a Belarus? Oh, man. If there were some... some people in the in the comments who've operated a belarus yeah let's hear it because it is <laughs> unbelievable it's, they're unlike any machine and a lot of people really dog them they're oh. like but if the country of belarus forget those guys turned out something back in the 70s 80s, yeah, 90s, it's hard to know because they never changed the style yeah the original prototype belarus is the same as the last one that rolled off the, the production line but they were kind of the first um, generic, cheap, off-brand tractor that yeah. you could get a hold of in the U.S. Oh back then. yeah, I mean, un unre- and like how to operate it, <laughs> just weird controls. You'd have to twist the top of yeah. a <laughs> like there was a uh, there was a stick that came up, and you'd have to twist the top like and do easy, a pattern both. and do a pattern both to get it into the to the right range and gear. I mean, it was crazy. Con- and, yeah, and it was like you're either in like high road gear or low creeper yep. and you never knew till you let the clutch out you're like just a oh, oh which is a fun little surprise when you're grabbing a bale off the top of a trailer and you're like okay i'm either in 
get up and go <laughs> on the highway mode or i'm either in regular and uh and no markings that, no you just always like oh yeah <laughs> totally blind but the hydraulic power dude it was small i don't oh, know how many horses was, do you and think? it had a full cab so it's this tiny it's oh, probably yeah. a 40 horse tractor yeah not a big tractor and and has a full cab on it yeah so you're like what well, is it it seems nice because yeah, right. where I come from, if it had a cab on it, it was nice. Yeah. If it didn't have a cab, it was like, we're just out here, you know, we're just kind of banding together yeah. out here. And it had a cab. But you wouldn't believe that thing, the hydraulic power it had. I mean, you just barely pull back on your hydraulic lever and just whoosh, raise everything right up. I think I would move like two bales. Because the they were kind of smaller round bales. They were probably 1,000, yeah. 1,000 pound round bales. Yeah, they were pretty small. And the Belarus was just like, just showing the motherland. <laughs> oh, I remember getting home after all this to Rooster and saying, Roost, you've got to get a Belarus. You've got to find a Belarus. Man, like it fits Belarus. Roost. Rooster. Roos. Yeah. Belarus. It all, it's like it's meant to be, yeah, man. Yeah, do you need any more persuasion to get this thing? Get it. Oh, that was fun going back and forth. And then, do you remember getting rained out when we were up there? Oh yeah. So, oh yeah. So, how did it all end? Yeah, I mean, it was like we get. I think we got a day in. About halfway through the second day, it just starts raining. Yeah. And we're like, hmm. Oh, but but before we got rained out, mo- first morning. This is our first full morning. So we 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 bunked in the old international, the Coriani Road. Coriani King. Yeah. yeah. We so we get up. And I'm like, all right, here's the plan, man. I'm going to load the trucks because we're still using the old Oliver. <laughs> mm-hmm. Said, I'm going to load, start loading trucks. Why don't you jump in your truck, your pickup, run up town, go to Albertsons or whatever there, and get us some breakfast. Yeah. And then time you get back, I'll probably have one of these trucks loaded. We'll, we'll be close. We'll, you know, we'll, get, we'll eat some breakfast, finish loading. Yeah. Get rolling. So that's what we do. Send Weston out. First time, rolling out, kind of. Spreading my wings a little yeah, bit. Yeah, spreading your young wings. Flying out. Well, Weston comes rolling back in with breakfast. Breakfast let, of champions. Yeah, I'm going to let you go ahead on this because I'd like to know the thoughts and just the how thought was went down. The thought was, I'm here for a good time. <laughs> and that is it. All I want to do. <laughs> Not here I'm, for a long time. Yeah. Here for a good time. Yeah. I'm just first time away from mom and dad kind of out doing my own thing with my brother on a paying gig. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Yeah. So take my truck up to Albertsons, go right past, you know, any of the healthy options, straight to the donut section, get us two dozen donuts for the two of us for breakfast. Well, it wasn't just dozen donuts. You got Twinkies? Oh, yes. I think I got a dozen donuts and then a yeah. bag of powdered donuts. Yeah, just yep, the little powdered minis. And then I got... You got glaze, the big box of full-size glaze. Yeah, powdered minis. powdered minis. And I got four packs of Twinkies. Yeah, yeah so we could to have... To wash it down for a balanced <laughs> meal. <laughs> Two weeks to balance all that preservatives. But then we need something to wash her down with. <laughs> right, right. So I think I need something to... Now, hold on. Most people, and this is my... This is most truckers' philosophy, like the way that they kind of justified just eating total trash is they're like i'll just i'll flush i'll get a ton of water and Mm. i'll just pound the water and i'll flush and that'll kind of just keep me balanced yeah not my philosophy here that was not (laughs) when i thought we need something to kind of fire the taste buds up (laughs) go to the orange juice section i think we can do better than that because that's what that's what our mom always told us going orange juice wakes wakes up up the taste taste buds buds. yes yes so go straight past the orange juice. Well, and, what and, what looks like orange juice, but is a hundred times better. Saving money too. Sunny D, baby. Sunny D. So got dozen donuts, Twinkies, powdered donuts, and two like gallons. Two gallon jugs of Sunny D. Of Sunny D. <laughs> Roll back to the field. Uh, to Rolls Jackson. Rolls back over to me. I'm, I'm, I don't, I'm thinking you know some breakfast burritos. I don't know. Maybe they have a hot case there at the Albertsons. Western rolls in just with Twinkies and Ho Hos and everything else. <laughs> and then he out from behind his back just pulls out a full jug of sunny d you know what sunny d's like good but then it gives you like that burning aftertaste where it's like it's like really strong like what exactly is sunny d it's just kind of you know in hindsight probably um was a cry for help on my hand and probably should have been maybe one of the earlier signs of I wasn't going to have the best health, and I probably need to try to rein that in. And but, when I get out on my own, I'm probably not going to be super responsible. Not with, be great. Oh man. Oh, so we do breakfast, and and I'm you know I'm young enough too. I'm like, great, cool, this is awesome. Sweet. Yeah, let's roll. So we do it, and we go unload the hay. By the time we get back down to yeah. town, it's full on, just cut loose. Like you, you can't, the trucks are going to get stuck in the field. Like you can't go anywhere. You can't, they're never going to pull a load of hay out of here. You're just going to get buried. Yeah. So 
we're way, we're so far from home. Like we're we're homeless. We're sleeping in this truck on the side of the road, and we decided, you know, there is a town not too far, you know, an hour or so west of us that we could go hit up, town of Haver, Montana, that has a movie theater. <laughs> so we're like, you know what? We're eating Twinkies. We're doing donuts. <laughs> Sunny D. Why don't we just go on? We can't. We're the day's shot. Yeah. Be better tomorrow. Let's uh let's go down to the movie theater and see what we can find. Yeah. So we did. And we did it again. And, and we again. Did it again. I think we and saw again. two or three movies. I think, just, I think we saw the early matinee. Well, we paid for one movie. I we paid say. for the early matinee. <laughs> and, is, and I apologize for this. I know. We know. We've grown up and we know. Paid for the early matinee and thought, you know what? It's so cold out there. We don't want to go back outside and come in. So then we hit the late matinee. Yeah. And then after the late matinee. Still over, raining. Yeah. Still raining. What else are you going to do? Hit the night show. Hit the night show. Oh, so that was. We, you know. She would probably send them a check now, all these years later, and say, this was for this one time when we were young and poor. We spent all our money on donuts. <laughs> Blew it all on the Twinkies. We and couldn't I, pay I, for a show. I remember it was the show Warrior. Remember that UFC show? Yeah. That would kind of date it. I don't know when that oh, came out. Oh, yeah. Wasn't that in theaters? Yeah, it was. You're, yeah, you're right. Warrior. Yeah. I don't remember what the other ones were there. Just fries them. <laughs> yeah. Oh, funny. Warrior. And then we, we ended up... We did like three quarters or two thirds of all the deal, and then got just totally rained out, didn't we? Yeah, we. I think the next day it kind of cleared up, and we got some loads, and we ended up getting yeah the bulk, the majority of it done. Yeah, struggling through, struggling through to yeah. where by the end we're like this again. We're kind of feeling like we did when we were loading those cattle for that lady. We're like, I, this could have been. It could have been. It could have been. Yeah, but it but it wasn't. It just but it wasn't quite. Been. Yeah, it could have been, but wasn't quite. You know, it was just Mother Nature thing. Yeah, Fred was thing. Fred was real happy. With Amazing that. old fella. Yeah, good guy. But uh, yeah, it wasn't. So we, uh, he he's like, oh, I'll I'll wrap it up. Yeah. I can finish. You know, a few loads. I don't mind that. So yeah. we're like, all right, thanks. And we settle up, and again, we come away though tired and bedraggled, feeling like you can make some money trucking. Yeah, this like, is it's important because this is where Jackson's figuring out like, hey, I, if I hit it, like if you work hard and you just yeah. put your nose down. And this is all again fun hard. Yeah. Um, you can you can do it. You yeah. can make it. You can make it go, and you can do it without having to borrow this money. You know, you can. Man, yeah. I started here. And now I'm here. Yeah. Now I'm here. Yeah. You know I mean? And it and it and it evolves and grows and goes. This graduated into a couple huge hay, you know, and straw contract, not contracts, but contacts that turned into like these just amazing deals. But it was all born from this. Yeah. And 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 the cattle deals that I have now, from what we did then, it all it was just this. It's like building a like a legit foundation. Yeah, you know, people that just come into stuff right at the top and don't have to claw their way through all yeah. this quagmire. You just don't. You have no idea. It's like you like can't what you missed. You can't help a butterfly come out of the cocoon, or else they'll never fly. Oh, Jim. Oh, that's good, man. Just right. Whew, that struggle yeah. is what makes it. Yeah. Now, it, oh, but. Uh, a sad follow up. Remember what happened to the old oh, right. Oriani King? Sad follow up, you guys, is that to the truck to Fred's truck? Yeah, because I, I think Fred. You know, the next year we kind of stayed in some touch, and um, you know, and I'm not sure with Fred. I wonder if he's still around. I'm not, I'm not sure. sure. But uh, anyway, I call him the next year. Like, is this? Do you want us to kind of put this on the radar? Um, just staying in touch, and he's like, "Oh no, I actually have I have a nephew that's going to come do it." So then the third year. I think he might have actually hit me up that third year, and I was getting busy enough by then, I just couldn't do it. Yeah. But he's like, hey, I need someone to come up. And I was like, well, you still have your truck, and maybe I can find, I don't know. And he's like, well, no, it's it's not really it's not really running anymore. Galore, you know, rhyming because he's a poet. It, he can't help it. I can't help it. And I'm like, oh, well, what happened? He goes, well, I remember last year I said I was hiring my nephew to run that rig. Yeah. He goes, well, he... He was doing it, and like his second load or something he hauled out of town or through town. You have to go through town. There's a couple sharp corners you got to make. He goes, he, he come in a little hot, took the corner a little sharp, and laid the whole thing over. You know, all them bales must have shifted and just, yeah. just pulled the whole truck over. Lays the semi over right in town. Yeah. <laughs> and apparently it was, an, I probably left the engine on. You yeah, know, and with yeah. the oil all sideways, it it'll, just it'll wreck ruins everything. everything. Yeah, yeah, so so I think that old truck ended up getting uh, just getting ruined. The engine probably blew up or whatever. And <laughs> that was the end. And I drive by there still, and I every time I drive by, I'm always like that. 
that's the spot. That's oh, yeah. where we started. If you're, ever, if you're ever on Highway 2 between Fort Belknap and Harlem, that's right yep. where Jackson got started. Yep. And I was there. And you too. You yep. were there, Jim. You yep. were there. Oh, jeez. Good stuff. So uh, this kind of this is, this is kind of marks the pre, kind of a, a, what's the word? A bookmark, I yeah. guess, in our, in our little trucking history. Um, right after this, you ended up getting a mission call from the church to go serve your mission. Uh, in well, they told you you're going to Guam. Yeah, right. Yeah, Guam. But I was actually for, for two for well, eighteen Pretty months of the two yeah. years. I was out on some islands called Chuuk, out in the middle of nowhere. But so that's and this. Then I go on my mission. Then I come back and kind of jump right back into it. So this, which, yeah, this was like let's let's call this like old world, old times. Yeah, Weston's gone for two years, and I of course have to carry on without. Yeah, just like he had to carry on when I left on mine, and. uh when when he gets back, the scene is it's a little different from when he left. The trucking has evolved. Can I tease it, or do you want to? Yeah, say no, it? go ahead. You yeah, go ahead. no, it was we went from you know these scraped together hay hauls in Harlem and hauling these cattle out of Denton, you know, for this lady, just crazy stuff. And then I go, and then when I come, by the time I come back, Jay has kind of taken this little springboard that you know we yeah. we got going together, and he's got I don't know, you, you have four or five semis. You got two hay trains and five or six bull racks that you own, and you've got four guys driving for you, pulling your trailers. Yeah, just and that's in two years' time. It just like, but right, but again, just goes to show you were patient. You kind of grew within your means, and were yeah. willing to do the type of work that you kind of had to do right. within your means, and and good stuff happens, right? And you know, not everyone's gonna find two five hundred dollar trucks that you can run down the road in a shelter belt, right? So, so of course, acknowledge that there's some luck there, yeah, right? Had but some things fall into place. But and still, some rooster helping, you know, let me borrow his truck. A hundred percent, right? So it's right. not everyone is gonna be able to have that exact same set of circumstances, but just the but principle you can take the of principles. Yep, exactly. Yeah. Of grow within your means, truck within your means, and you're gonna get there a lot quicker than you think, and you're gonna do it in a pretty good financial situation. Which for you, you didn't. You didn't really have to finance anything through a bank. No, no. I'll tell that story maybe next time. Yeah. Uh, for the next recording, but yeah, it was a two week. I had a two week note with the bank one time. And yeah. I was like, you guys, thank you so much for listening in. I hope you're enjoying these tales. This is uh, this is really good. I forgot how crazy my own little history of trucking was. Um, you know, you've heard Rooster. Rooster has so much more to share. Billy Jack has more to share. Luke has more to share. Um, it's it's just you forget until you dig in and get going with it how much is out there and uh, appreciate you guys being a great audience and listening and uh, you know if you enjoy this stuff if you have people in your family that you think would enjoy this kind of content um, feel free to share it um, word of mouth is always the best way to go and to grow and uh, we feel like these stories they benefit us personally for our own posterity but we feel like they're stories and and times that can can benefit you know, everybody else as well. So please do that. Um, share that with your friends and family. If you have any inquiries, any questions, email steady at the wheel podcast at gmail.com. You can follow us on Instagram, uh, at steady at the wheel podcast. If you want to follow me on Instagram and see some of my daily shenanigans, uh, I'm out there at shamanush on Instagram. Um, and then lastly, <laughs> I know. You're like, well, I might have a little follow up next time we record on on me never being allowed into, into the Shamanash club, club and, w- and what I was willing to do <laughs> to try to true. get in. Yeah. We'll talk about that. And uh, yeah, lastly, you want to check out a little more YouTube content at uh, hit me up at Wild Wild West. Until next time, you guys be good. <laughs>